Something else you don't expect to find are giant whales. When skeletons like these were first discovered in the 19th century, they were thought to be the remains of huge sea serpents. They were named Basilosaurus, which means king lizard. But Basilosaurus was no giant lizard. It has a mouthful of unmistakably mammalian teeth. This is the snout of the animal, and this is the roof of the mouth. And these are the incisors, these are the front teeth, here, here, and here. And as you get further back, you see the, the teeth have two roots. You see two here, two here, and two here. Basilosaurus has um, actually very few teeth compared to modern toothed whales and has a, the number of teeth much more like primitive mammals. They use their front teeth to grab on to prey, and then they use their back teeth to chew their food, unlike modern toothed whales which swallow their food whole. This area in Egypt was named Valley of the Whales because the desert floor is littered with the remains of Basilosaurus. These creatures were giant predators, but they weren't quite like modern whales yet. Their bodies were long and snake-like, and they still had some primitive characteristics that linked them back to their ancestors on land. These are the back legs of Basilosaurus. You can see here the pelvis, the femur, the kneecap, the lower leg, and the foot, which even has little toes on it. These tiny hind legs weren't attached to the backbone, and their small size shows us that they couldn't support the body weight on land. So if they weren't used for walking, what could they have been used for? Well, one idea is they were used as sexual claspers, that the male and female used them to hook up during mating and hold on while they mated. At 18 meters long, Basilosaurus was probably the largest animal on Earth at that time. It presented a real challenge for the scientists and special effects artists to make it work properly. The scale model had to be shrunk to fit, and it still took four people to control it. Giving a feeling of sort of sinister. And working out how to get an extinct animal to swim was a combination of artistic skill and scientific advice. So how would you like to see those, these, what are these, do you call these back legs or? They are back they legs. They are essentially yeah. back legs, right. I'd like to see them, if the joints will do it, yeah. like just trailing, pointing absolutely straight back. Just right, okay. Yeah, sure. like, like the feet of an otter, for example. Right, okay. Yeah, sure thing. Now at last, the story can be told of how hoofed carnivores evolved webbed feet and started to swim. Eventually their backbones loosened, their legs got smaller, and their tails turned into flukes. The mystery of how a group of mammals conquered the water was complete.